It's unholy mad science time. In this system, we have something unholy, or do we? It's the EVGA Dark SR3, that's a 3647 CPU. This is basically the most expensive consumer system you can get. The only thing that would be faster is like the Threadripper 64 core or a dual Epic. This is a ridiculous system. Or is there some as yet unannounced system, uh, CPU in this system, that uh, is more than 28 cores, that's an unholy union of, you know, I don't know, if, if I were to explain CPU process technology, it's, uh, it's kind of like in the ninth gate. And, you know, there's Johnny Depp's character, and then there's the girl, and then, you know, there's this unholy thing that happens, and the demon spawn is in this 3647 socket. Now, I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that there might be some things happening. And, and so, you know, Johnny Depp would be TSMC, and the girl's probably Intel. It's like that scene at the end of the movie. The 10 nanometer thing is really just not going well for Intel. But 3647 EVGA Dark SR3, 96 gigabytes of memory. I love the motherboard, dual Intel, 10 gig mix. But I've misdirected you. Or did I because it was in the title? This monitor is the Pixio PX247. It's a 1080p IPS 144 hertz refresh display from Pixio. Let's take a look. Now, full disclosure, Pixio did send me this monitor, but no strings attached, and uh, I'm usually pretty hard on these things. This is a machine we're going to use for testing because uh, it's, uh, it's like a top 10 machine. I was able to, without using liquid nitrogen, I was able to get into the top 10 of benchmarks, thanks mainly to the modded BIOS, which has sub NUMA clustering. I'm getting kind of comfortable with Pixio, which is probably not a good thing. I mean, the last several monitors that they've put out have sort of been that sweet spot. See, like I used to be super into Korean monitors because the Korean monitors were a pretty good value. They were all like B grade panels. So there was always gonna be something. There was some kind of defect, something wrong, but you could get them shipped from Korea and they cost like half or less. Well, Pixio sort of closed that gap. These monitors are higher quality than the old Korean monitors that I used to do. Universally higher quality, it's not the luck of the draw. And generally I've been pretty happy with them. There have only been a couple of monitors that I feel like they could have done a better job. So in this box, we've got the power brick, which is an external power brick, which means the monitor is gonna be really lightweight. Definitely not taking this out of the box correct the correct way. Look how thin this monitor is, look at this. It's crazy, it's got this little part at the back at the bottom here, and the Visa mount's also at the bottom, which is great, I think. See, I'm sort of tall, and I like having monitor arms, because the stands that come with these monitors, it's never tall enough for me. Having the Visa mount at the bottom means that if you do opt to use a monitor arm, the monitor's gonna sit that much higher instead of as, you know, as opposed to the middle of the monitor. I also like that it balances a little bit more, because all the electronics and stuff in the bottom with the panel, it kind of offsets that. Oh, I'm missing a bag of screws. Hello. It's in the bag. Much like this review. It's a little bit, a little bit crazy. Probably should have built this the other way, but you know what? It's fine. And not bad. It's got a little plastic door to cover the, uh, cover the, uh, it's Shane. It's like a pair of long underwear where you climb in through the butt. Things continue much the way that they have been going. It's going to be a brave new world. At the rear, the connections are pretty simple. Audio, which is analog audio out from, I mean, it gets audio from the HDMI or the DisplayPort source. The DC jack, one HDMI port and one DisplayPort port. Now this is a high refresh 2560 by 1440 display, so, so I might be quarantined at the office, not because I'm sick, but because everybody else is. So it might be a little, little bit of cabin fever going on in this review. 17.3 milliseconds, that's good because this is 60 hertz refresh. So by the time it gets to the end of the display, it's only taken about 1.6 milliseconds sort of aggregate latency. No, what has happened? 1.8, 1.9, 1 two milliseconds, something like that. This is a great result for this panel. We don't have Chrome. What sort of barbarism is this? And so the idea with this, this kind of a test is we use the camera to record the motion of the square at very high frame rates. And then we play it back at a much slower frame rate. And we look for frames where the square can be seen from one frame to the next. 
even though the display is refreshing at 144 hertz, it doesn't necessarily fully unpaint the previous frame and fully repaint the next frame. So this gives us an idea of, I mean, yeah, the display's running at 144 hertz, but is it displaying information at 144 hertz? That's the question. In the on-screen display, there's two options that I wanna call your attention to, overdrive and FreeSync. So FreeSync is off by default, which are we, are we really wanna turn on, and overdrive. Now, theoretically, overdrive will give you a little bit better response time in the high-speed footage that we were seeing, but it severely diminishes the picture quality. So I'm not gonna turn that on. I did do some testing just to see how that would, that would actually work. Uh, and it doesn't really improve things enough, in my opinion, to, to say, okay, yes, turn this mode on. This is definitely worth testing. Uh, you know, this is a good thing. It really just, it's almost like a, a sharpening filter on the display is what it visually looks like. And it, it does make things slightly faster but if you're playing like CSGO or something like that, I don't think that setting is gonna help you. For the free sync range on this monitor, using the custom resolution utility and some experimenting in games, seems to be about 48 hertz at the low end to 147 hertz, a little even beyond the 144 hertz that it's officially rated for. I did experiment some with the custom resolution utility and I was able to push down into like 32 hertz, but it's technically an overclock, your mileage may vary. And I'm not really sure if when it drops below 48, some sort of custom like low frame rate compensation thing kicks in. AMD, especially in the newest driver that came out like two days ago as of this video, um, is doing a lot to try to compensate for you know, if your frame rate drops below things, you can just double it. Because if your frame rate drops below 48, it can just double it. Interesting things with the monitor. What's going on with the monitor? It truly is 144 hertz, 144 hertz refresh rate. However, it's an IPS panel. IPS in-plane switching. It's a very high quality LCD typically, or at least historically, it's been a very high quality panel. There are new technologies that are even higher quality that threaten to supplant IPS one of those being OLED, but there are some drawbacks with that technology because it's not quite as mature as IPS. So what Pixio has done is cram an awesome 1080p IPS panel into this thing, 27 inches. So it gives them a little bit more room for routing invisible wires that go to pixels so that they can sort of cheat the system here a little bit and get this thing to actually run at 144 Hertz. But as we can see from our 144 Hertz high-speed camera footage, it's not quite 144 hertz. Definitely one of the fastest, if not the fastest IPS panel that I've seen. But if we do the math and we look at the frames and run, run through all that, from a purely off pixel to a purely on pixel, we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of like 90 to 100 hertz, which is pretty darn good. Now it does start bringing the pixels up at, in somewhere in that 144 hertz neighborhood. I think 120 hertz would be a more reasonable number based on the refresh. Pixio refers to this as a one millisecond panel, which would mean that it has a one one thousandth of a second response time. And that would mean that if that were absolutely true from black to white, it could theoretically display a thousand frames per second if we could, you know, had an enormous, <laughs> an enormous bandwidth pipe feeding it. But in this case, the panel is slower than the 144 hertz interface. But still, 120 hertz IPS panel, it's incredible. And the input latency, the input latency only being 1.2 milliseconds, that is one of the better pixel, uh, better latency monitors in Pixio's lineup because the worst monitor that I saw was like eight or 10 milliseconds from Pixio. Most monitors that, except for ones designed specifically for gaming, will run in that 10 to 16 to 24 millisecond range. A lot of TVs, except for some of the ones that have gaming modes, because they're kind of getting wise to this, they'll run in like the 30 millisecond range. 1 60th of a second is 16 milliseconds. So, uh, you know, if you if you watch my monitor reviews before, they're all kind of a crash course in what to look for in a monitor, because what they print on the box and what's actually going on with the monitor, totally different things. So being IPS, how is it for color accuracy? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we've got a colorometer. Color accuracy is on the screen, and if you want to download a pre-calibrated display and that's calibrated for my display, your display is probably going to be a little different than my display. You can download that. The link is below. Use the Spider colorometer with uh, open source display cal software to do the, the colorometry, but uh, not bad for an IPS display. Not great, not full RGB, nowhere near DCI-P3, 
but not bad for a gaming monitor. And also the price, the price is pretty reasonable on this monitor, I think, at least as of, you know, Q1 2020. I'm Whittle, this has been a level one monitor review of the 1080p PX247. It's a 27 inch monitor, but it's 1080p, it's not 1440p. I, my personal opinion is I think 1080p is kind of starting to go away in favor of 1440p gaming because a lot of really inexpensive cards will do 1440p. This monitor is FreeSync capable and you can, you've got a couple of options in terms of like the FreeSync modes. We also tested, in addition to the uh, 2080 Ti, the NVIDIA reference card, also tested the blower style RX 5700 XT. So both of these will support FreeSync with this monitor. It works reasonably well. Time for the B-roll. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. It's been a Level 1 monitor review. I'm signing out and I'll see you later. Oh, and if you have more questions, come to the Level 1 forums because probably other people have the same questions and I will try to help you. We'll see.